Okay. Hi, everyone. Can, can, can you hear me? Yeah. That's good? Okay, awesome. Uh, I am so excited to be here today to talk to you guys about education as a human endeavor. Uh, and I came all the way from Mali to give this speech. And before you get mad at me for living in an Indonesian island paradise, I'm coming from Mali, which is in West Africa. They are very different places, Mali. Uh, so on the flight over here, one question was bouncing around inside of my head. And that is, what does a good educator look like? And, and, oh, wow. and <laughs> just have a loud voice. Uh, and immediately my girlfriend uh, popped into my head. She teaches English at the American International School in Bamako. She is a phenomenal educator. Uh, and tell me if this sounds familiar to those of you who are married to or dating educators. We come home after spending 10 or 11 hours at school. And the first thing she talks to me about is her students. Oh my god, you would not believe how well Michaela did on her constructive response essay today. And I know I can get her to do better if I just sit her next to Yannick instead of Florian. And I'm like, honey, it is 100 degrees outside. All I want to do is take off all of my clothes and have a cold beer. <laughs> but she really, uh, what, what I really learned from her is that the best educators are those who meet students where they are and forge deep, meaningful connections with their students. For Chelsea, her students' challenges are her challenges. Her students' triumphs are her triumphs. And because she cares and knows about them so well, she is able to choose the most appropriate strategies to reach them. And this is why I say that education is an art before it is a science. It is a human endeavor. Because before we can even get to the point of applying our sound, research-based, teaching pedagogical strategies, we've got to get through to the 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 different personalities that are in our rooms. And they're dealing, they're each dealing with different things. They're dealing with family stuff and relationship stuff and learning how to shower in the mornings, ninth grade teachers, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and getting over malaria, we are in Africa. Uh, when I taught in Kuwait, uh, I taught a lot of Gulf Arab boys. Um, and they're really great, really genuine, uh, but because they're basically guaranteed a job when they graduate, they don't, aren't necessarily invested in learning for the sake of learning um, the way some other student populations are. So it was a struggle for me to reach them. Uh, and so as I got to know them, I realized that they were really fiercely nationalistic, and I figured maybe if I show some respect for that and their culture, they would buy into what I was offering. And that's how I ended up dressed like that. And sure enough, once they saw that I was kind of buying into their thing, they, they were willing to meet me halfway, plus or minus. So what does this have to do with technology? Nothing. You do not need technology to be a good teacher. Schools are communities. We're doing lots of different things for lots of different students. Um, and so we need to remember that there are some teachers who are not going to be using technology very much or at all, and they're still making really valuable contributions to their students in many different ways. And I'm not saying it's not important for us to teach technology to our kids. I'm not saying that it's not important for, uh, for our kids to know technology in order to be successful in an increasingly competitive global marketplace. Um, in fact, I think there are really awesome things that technology can do, but it's not just one thing. I think the strength of technology really is that it gives us the choice and freedom to meet the very diverse needs of our students, whatever those may be. And so all of us, not all of us are technology coordinators, but we're all, to in a sense, technology evangelists and learning to evangelists. Um, and how do we reconcile these two statements, that we don't need technology to be good teachers, but that technology gives us choice and freedom? Uh, and I think it's this. I think that we, as tech evangelists, we need to meet our teachers where they are. Just as the best educators meet their students wherever they are, we have to really understand our teacher population and their student population. When I started at my job last year at Bamako, I was up in front of the classroom, or in front of the, uh, the faculty, and I was like, man, you can use OwnCloud for sharing files, and you can use Etherpad for collaborative writing, and I have this thing called Friendica that helps you do awesome Facebook projects. And our French teachers were kind of looking at me with this glassy stare. 
And as I got to know them more, and I sat down with one of them, and I was like, okay, well, to put your files into the curriculum folder, all you need to do is just click and drag. And you have a MacBook, right? So, you know, click and drag on the trackpad. She did this, click and drag. It was two-handed touchpad operation. I had never seen it before. But that was kind of where she was, and that was fine. And as soon as I knew that, I was better able to sit down with her and meet her with, uh, meet her needs as a teacher so that she could then help her students. This conference is all about sharing. All of you love sharing, which I know because I've been looking at the Twitter feed. And you're going to go back and you're going to be like, listen to the awesome things that I heard about at this conference. And that's great. But before you share, I would like you to listen. Listen to your students. Listen to your teachers. And then go about integrating technology into what was, is, and always will be a quintessentially human endeavor. Thank you.